I'm Kevin, always on his forum, BX257, here to bring you another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. And today I'll be taking a look at the G.I. Joe's all-terrain buggy, the 1988 Swamp Masher. Now, like a lot of 1987 and 1988 vehicles, this didn't make any cartoon appearances, but it does make its first comic book appearance in the old Marvel comic run of G.I. Joe in issue number 87. Now, this thing is not exactly on the uh, top 10 lists of any G.I. Joe collector that I know, but it does have a lot of very interesting features. Well, undeniably, the Swap Masher is a very strange looking vehicle, and you can probably see two reasons right off the bat why collectors really don't like this vehicle at all. And of course, one of them is the color, because we have prominent Decepticon purple here, and very prominent Constructicon green. That's not something that you often find on G.I. Joe vehicles, but it does look like something you definitely would find on a Dreadnought vehicle. Of course, this thing is supposed to be uh, going into the swamps, so I guess that's where that color scheme kind of comes from. They wanted it to look like, you know, the sort of swampy, uh, mismatched, odd colors that the Dreadnoughts would use, but I don't know. I think uh, a subdued color and military colors would, would have just worked just as fine. Of course, the second thing that you might notice is the very weird uh, wheel system we have here with three wheels on each of the four corners. Well, actually calling them wheels is a bit of a misnomer. I don't believe that they are wheels in the traditional sense. They might be bogies with each bogey having an individual track around it. Of course, you have a uh, little cutouts on the ends of each one of these um, so that it probably treads mud and uh, shallow water a bit better. I'm not sure how that would have been any different than a large flotation tire, but that's what the G.I. Joe's went with, so there you have it. And of course, more than each one of these is an individual, but if you have an obstacle, this thing goes over it. And as you can see, the entire axle moves around as well for extra traction. But it still has some more very interesting features if you kind of ignore the colors and the odd tracks. Like I say, it has the uh, this front missile rack. These are actually called bombs, but they look more like missiles. And this whole thing actually kind of uh, elevates and depresses here. So we have two of these rather plain looking missiles. Again, they're, they're called bombs on the blueprints for some strange reason, but there you go. We have some rather nice detail on the surface with this uh, sort of diamond plating and all sorts of surface controls. An exposed engine, which is really strange and rather exaggerated exhaust tips here. Now on the back, one of my, uh, one of the, actually one of the best little um, mounted cannons that I've actually seen. I think, Kind of moves around 360 degrees, but it actually uh, kind of gets in the way once you start to elevating it and depressing it. It actually has four ratchets. Really nice. And of course, on the back you have two pegs, so figures could. Uh, snap their feet into that and a holding bar as well so you can have a figure holding on to here and operating the gun if you want to you don't want to have it like a sort of a automatic or pilot driven gun you can have it that way as well and speaking of the pilot here's where things get a little unfortunately badly engineered the drawback to having this articulated uh, little missile box here is that the hinge actually pokes through the body so when you're putting a figure into that seat the natural thing to do is to try and put the both legs between this control um, control arm thing here this is the 1988 muskrat the swamp fighter well 
we'll be uh, commenting on a little bit more. But as you can see, you put the figure down in there, it's just natural just to try and spread the figure's legs out sideways like this. But it doesn't work because that hinges in the way. What you actually have to do is to move the figure's legs a bit to the side so that one of the legs is on that control arm, or uh, rather under it. So that now when you put the figure in, it fits in. It's just that the foot isn't straight. That's, that's a rather bad design choice, but there is a benefit to that. Now there's nothing on the blueprints or instructions or even on this guy's file card to suggest that these two should go together. But they totally should go together. He is of course pictured on the front of the box as well. And it's kind of a shame that these guys weren't actually sold as a set, but they weren't. Now, he came with his boogie board, as well as some very slender accessories. And what I've discovered is, probably by accident, I'm pretty sure that this wasn't intentional. But, you know, if you put most figures into a vehicle, there's not a lot of space to put their extra accessories. However, on this vehicle, there totally is. Because now that you're not using that slot because it's way too skinny for a leg, you can totally put his accessories in there. They're long enough so that they don't actually slide all the way into the body. This boogie board can actually go in there too, but if you just leave that slot for his weapon as his machete, You'll notice that there's these odd grooves at the side here. I've noticed that they actually match up with the groove on the front of the uh, his boogie board. And look at that. It fits in like it was meant to. So what would the Swamp Masher's primary targets for the bad guys be? Well, virtually any Dreadnought vehicle. Like let's say the Chameleon. Normally ridden by Zartan, but I have Monkey Wrench on there right now. And of course, the Swamp Fire. And while the Swamp Fire was a helicopter as well, well, let's face it, you can elevate that machine cannon quite well and hit aerial targets just fine, thank you. I was really curious about what the Swamp Masher would look like with regular wheels on. So I took the opportunity to take off these uh, fancy tread bogey track things. And I'm going to put on some wheels borrowed from the 1987 Road Toad. Unfortunately, they only came with uh, two, but that's good enough just uh, for the one side, just to get a feel of what this thing would actually look like. Unfortunately, the holes on these wheels, and most wheels, are going to be too small for the rather large pegs. So if you're planning on doing this modification, you will have to sort of drill out the uh, the hole. But that's what it looks like with regular wheels. It doesn't look too bad at all. The other thing I was really curious about was, what would this thing look like if it had proper tracks? I mean, if you consider each one of these bogies with tracks around them, you could also consider them just each individual as a bogey with no track so if there was a track around them and I've just taken some double-sided duct tape here just to use as my track I'll just put them around here of course if you could salvage this from a regular track but you would have to sort of cut it and uh, glue it to fit putting a tread around this uh, the purple purple wheel bogies here also gets rid of a lot of the uh, offending purple as well. And that's what it would look like. Of course, you have to imagine this being a bit thicker and uh, textured like a tread. But as you can see, it actually does kind of work here. In my opinion, it's a little bit, a little bit too bulky for such a small body. So I would actually have preferred the, the individual tire. If you're looking for a Swamp Masher on the aftermarket, you don't have to worry because they are very common. They're also very commonly found completely intact. 
there's really nothing breakable on this thing. It's a very sturdy vehicle. The only thing I would have to worry about is whether or not you have both of the uh, missiles slash bombs. And that's about it. As a matter of fact, this was available for mail order through Hasbro in 1993, adding to just how many there are floating around. appearances in the 1987 so what would be the rival to the swap masher well that's all the time I have right now please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s GI Joe tour review see you then